I am Inizalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Let's get started. Uh, we'll need some things, so I'll we'll import them right now. These are the images. Uh, you can find these online. So these are some like window textures, uh, dust textures. So just search for these, find something that is similar to this. And then we have a grunge texture right here. And actually we can't share these because they are not uh, these textures are not ours. We're actually working on some from ourselves so we can start sharing them uh, finally. So um, maybe the links will be updated by the time that you're watching and you might find some uh, to our own textures right here. All right, so let's get started. By the way, if you don't want to follow this tutorial or you want to support our channel, you can always buy the entire project file with the link in the description. We provide a plugin version and a no plugin version. So depending on whatever you have, if you have trap code particular or not, you can just change the text and you're ready to go. And before we start this tutorial, I'd like to say that if you don't have the plugin called trap code particular, you won't be able to follow a step in the tutorial. Tutorial. Apart from that, you can just follow along and get the complete finish. The only thing that you won't be able to follow are the particles part. Uh, for those that do have it, uh, yeah, that's great. Let's get started. Create a new composition, make this a main comp, and we'll make this full HD 30 FPS, 10 seconds long, and click OK. The first thing that we'll do here is right click new and add a new solid layer. And I will rename this layer to background and click OK. And I will go to Effect, gra uh, Generate, Gradient Ramp right here. And I will change my ramp shape to a radial ramp. Once you have done that, I will just invert these colors. So I will pick the white to be black and the black to be white. And now I will have something like this. Then I will play along with these settings a little bit. So I'll position my shape to be in the center and just drag this out a little bit. And we have something like this. And then I will go to Effect, distort and search for the turbulence displace right here and I will just increase the size a bit and also the amount so we get something more like this click OK uh, well actually you don't have to click OK just go back to the project manager and just import your grunge texture to be on top of your background layer now I will go to effect color correction and add a tint effect to this layer so it becomes black and white and you can also shape it down so just click over here hold shift and drag it in so you have the entire layer to just fill your composition canvas right here and then I will change the blending mode of my texture to be multiply you can also go on the texture and go to effect channel and invert and that will uh, do something like this with your footage that's completely up to you then you can go to effect color correction and curves and uh, you can just drag down these fine things here so to get some more contrast in your image. And you can also press T on the keyboard to lower the opacity a little bit. Like this. Uh, you can also bring the highlights down a little. Well, actually, the highlights are okay. Just drag it in a little bit more so it becomes a little dark. Then I will go back to the project manager and I will and just make sure that my 8 bits per channel becomes 16 bit per channel uh, just for my color space to, uh, to have a little bit more options there. So uh, right click now new and add a new adjustment layer and this is going to be the color for our background. So color background, everything below this adjustment layer is going to be affected. So go to effect color correction, curves, and add this to the uh, adjustment layer right here. Again, you can maybe darken it a little bit more, uh, maybe the uh, highlights to brighten up a little bit. And now we can go into the green channel or the blue channel, add a little bit of blue, add a little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, green right here. Reds, you can take away some reds. And actually for the blue, we're going to do the same thing. So play around with these curves. You can also make like S curves like the highlights. I will uh, push in the blues and for the shadows I will uh, take them away a little bit and then you would get something more like this. You can do the same thing for the red so maybe in the red we can add some highlights but like in the shadows I want it to become green again more like this and that you can uh, fix like so. Uh, maybe for the green we can also uh, do some kind of uh, a gradient here. 
That way you can get some really interesting results like so. So this is without the curves and this is with the curves. So I'm uh, just playing around with it. Mastering the curves is really important. Um, then we're going to add a color correction tint effect and we can lower this value so it becomes a little bit better integrated into the shot. Something like this will work, uh, work fine. Actually, I will make the background blue. Uh, I think that's going to fit best with a golden text. So I'm going to just quickly uh, take my blue channels and just increase these and go into the reds remove my reds a little bit and then it becomes more cyan and then for the green we're also going to take away some of these uh, green colors right here and then we get something more like this uh, for the red maybe we'll need to take away a little bit more so it becomes a little bit more cyan and now we have something like this looking pretty great uh, we can also go to the rgb color and maybe like up the shadows a little bit and then you can get some of that flatness of course you don't have to exaggerate it I just want to push my blacks a little bit higher and now we have something like this all right so this looks great um, I'm going to take my text tool now and I will write my name so tolerated cinematics okay there we go and now what I want to do for these cinematics is make these like 70 and just uh, yeah just uh, make sure that the text is a little bit separated using this here and the tracking for the text click on your tolerated cinematics title and maybe make this a little bit bigger and for the cinematics we can make this like 600 and that's going to be a little bit better maybe a little bit smaller for the title as well and of course play around with it I'm using times new uh, new Roman here for the font I will click on my text Control A to select all my text here and just toggle these switches here uh, so it becomes a solid uh, text layer like so. I will now go to the Align tab right here and just center out my text. Click on this layer, go to Layer, Precompose this, move all the attributes and rename this to Title Design. Click OK and we're going to open it up, click on the text again back, Layer, Precompose, Title. And now open up that pre-composition of the title. We're going to duplicate this layer to so control. Well, actually, before we do that, click on the layer, go to layer. And we're going to add a quick gradient. So right here we have layer styles. We can go into the gradient overlay. Now, if we open up right here the gradient overlay, you can edit the gradient right here. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to just pick some of the colors to become uh, a little like gold. I'm going to just do this very quickly. If you want an in-depth tutorial I have a tutorial on how to create golden text in Adobe After Effects I'm not going too much into detail right now I'm just going to quickly do my thing speed through this and I'll see you in a second all right so this looks pretty cool I'm just going to duplicate and actually uh, if you want to see my gradient I did something like this right here uh, click OK, just click on the text and Control D on the keyboard to duplicate your text. And now instead of using our solid, we're going to toggle the switches so we only have the outlines. And if we're going to solid this, we get something like this. If we're going to focus on this, we are going to open up right here with the arrow, go into the layer styles, gradient overlay, and we're going to click on reverse. And now we're going to get a different kind of gradient. If you're going to unsolo this, you're going to notice a difference on the text, um, but we need to accentuate a little bit more. So, um, but we need to add a little bit more accents to the text. So go to edit gradient and now right here in the darker tones, I will just make it very bright. So now you can see these highlights on the text right here, which make it really, uh, really cool actually. So right here, I'm going to do the same thing. Just play around with all these settings, see what you can do with it. Okay, so now we have a little bit of the accents right here to our text. I think this looks fine for now and without the stroke and with the stroke really adds a little bit of 3D depth. Uh, so we'll keep it as it is right now. Let's go to the tile design and now we can use our project via manager and use the texture again. So this, uh, this texture, put it on top of your title and duplicate the title layer. So click on the layer, control D on the keyboard, bring your grunge title below that title. And then for the track mat, if you don't see that, toggle the switches right here and change this to an alpha mat. Now you're going to see a grunge right here on the text layer. You can press S on the keyboard to lower uh, the scale of your texture right here. You can actually see it like so. And then you can play around with the blending mode. So click on one of the blending modes and then hold shift and press the plus sign on your keyboard. And that's going to allow you to toggle through all the blending modes for that texture. And now you can get some really interesting results like this one. 
click on the texture, go to effect, color correction tint to make it black and white so you don't get any weird spill uh, and then you're going to get something like this. Of course you can go into the uh, tint effect and maybe change the color up if you like that. Uh, you can do a lot of cool things with this setup. So maybe make it a little bit warmer like this and you get something uh, pretty cool. You can also add a little bit of uh, curves and add a little bit of contrast here into your text. I'm going to make this a little bit less uh, saturated uh, like so, maybe something like this. Click OK and now I have my golden text which actually looks very detailed. Uh, so we're going to use this as our text. Go back to the main comp. Now we have our text right here. Now all we have to do is also add our um, glass uh, effect. So I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to drag this into my composition and change the blending mode to a screen. Now I'm going to the effect color correction curves and I'm going to add more contrast to it so we uh, really have these blacks and these are not going to cover our center part. Going to the blue channel again I'm going to add a little bit of blue in the red channel I'm going to take away some of the blue and for the green I'm going to add like a nice S curve. Okay, so we have something like this, looks great. Now what we have to do as well is add some kind of particles on top of our text. To do that, I actually duplicated my title design right here and I created a new solid layer on top of that. I renamed this Fractal Noise and clicked OK. Go to Effect, Noise and Grain and add a Fractal Noise effect. Right here I'm going to take my complexity down to 2 and I'm going to add up my contrast by a lot, like something to like so. We can actually go in our fractal type and change it to a dynamic progressive, maybe increase the contrast a little bit, uh, actually the complexity back to 6. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. For the uh, transform I'm going to jump in here, go to the scale and ju just uncheck uniform scaling and I'm going to play around with my scaling here. So for the height I'm going to increase that and also um, for the brightness I'm going to take away some brightness so we don't have that many white spots right here. Okay, so now I'm going to bring that fractal noise below one of my title design layers and I'm going to the track mat option again and change it to alpha mat again. So now what we're going to see is on top of our layer, it's going to look at the information of our title and it's going to just show that part on top of your title. Uh, you can just play around a little bit more with this right now so you can play with the evolution maybe and get it to something like this and we're going to use this as a reference. Okay, so what I will do now is click on my fractal noise and my title design so hold shift and select both of these go to layer pre-compose and pre-compose them as a fractal well actually I'm going to rename this to particle emitter and click OK and open up that uh, composition right click new and add a new solid layer make it black click OK OK and just put it on the bottom here so we do have a background to our layer right here if we solo it. This is what our layer actually consists of and now we're going to uncheck this go to effects and presets and actually no we're going to click on our layer go to effect right here and keying uh, extract right here we have it. And what we're going to do here is actually taking away the black colors and that's going to allow us to just look at the layer information to emit particles from. So we're going to extract it so we only see these white parts right here. We're going to add another generate effect and fill so we get clean white or black spots or whatever you want for color. Uh, maybe some dark brown colors like this. Now we're going to click on our layer and go to layer pre-compose and particle emitter comp. There we go, move all the attributes, make sure that this is checked on and click OK. I'm going to duplicate this layer and just uncheck both of these, toggle the switches and for one of these layers I'm going to make it a 3D layer. I'm also going to rename this to Particle Emitter again um, or actually just V1 uh, so we do get a difference in name from these two layers. Then I'm going to right click New and add a new solid layer, rename this to Particles and click OK. Now I'm going to the effect right here, trap code, and add a trap code particular effect to our layer. And I'm going to open up my emitter tab. Currently my my particles are actually spawning from a point in the center of my screen. I want them to uh, actually spawn from the information that we see from our previous layer. So only the white spots that we still see, uh, everything that's actually having an alpha value. 
To do that, we're going to change our emitter type to a layer and go into the layer emitter right here. Click open and just select your layer right here, emitter V1. So click on that and we're also going to change the RGB usage right here to none so we can actually pick our own color. I'm going to increase my particles for now to something like 100,000 and just make sure that your computer can handle these kind of numbers so maybe you will have to go lower than this. And now we're actually going to see our particles like so. Currently they are exploding because we have a velocity set to it so I'm going to zero out all of these settings. And now you can actually see that they are spawn spawning on that position of the fractal noise. If you want a different position just go into the particle emitter, click on the fractal noise and change through the actual evolution and you will see if we go back to the main comp it's going to change its actual spawning data so I'm going to pick something that I like something like this go back to the main comp and right here we have it open up the particle tab and right here I'm going to set my size to 1 maybe even lower if you can handle it I'm also going to change my particles per second to 1 million because I actually need a lot of them go into the opacity of life and right here I'm going to fade them out using this preset click on it it's going to fade out my particles over life now I want my particles flying to the right and actually having some turbulence to it to do that we have to open up the physics step we can go into the air and just add some wind in X we're going to increase this value to something like 150 and we get something like this maybe 100 is already good enough and then we're also going to the turbulence field and change this to a effect position of 250 we're also going to change the scale if necessary so maybe something like 12 and there we go we have our particles looking great uh, we can also add a little bit of gravity or if you want to you can also make them go up using the wind and y and that's going to affect them a little bit like so so this looks pretty cool I have 1 million can I add 10 million I'm not sure I think 1 million is a maximum that you can add particles all right so I'm going to keep it as it is currently and then I will go into the particle tab and actually instead of a size of 1 I'm going to set it at 0.7 click OK and then I'm going to change my colors for my particles I'm going to change my color to over life so they actually change color over life and now you can currently see that we have a different kind of color set open up the tab for color over life and change it to a white to black color I'm going to change my white to a nice bright yellow or orange something like this that looks kind of gold and then for the black I'm going to make it very dark orange like so maybe desaturate it a little bit so we get something like this this looks great I'm going to duplicate my particles layers right here so I'm going to click on the layer hold control and press D on the keyboard that's going to duplicate my layer the only thing currently is it's actually looking at the same position so we now have two particles in the same spot we want to change that up so it actually looks like we have a lot more particles we can go into the random seed right here in the emitter tab and just click on it and press the up arrow on your keyboard and you're going to see that it starts to thicken up if you duplicate it once more you can again randomize it you're going to see that actually your single particles become like a more solid thing you can also go into the shader right here the shading and open up the shadow led for main and just put this on on and we can also add a light to the scene and actually it's already there so we can do this for each layer individually uh, so before we do that we can actually do that up front uh, I'll look at the actual physics but now we can do it right here so main I will put this to on right here you can also change the blending mode to a screen for the particles themselves so maybe go back and do that for all of these as well I actually forgot to do that beforehand normally you get one perfect particle setting and duplicate it that way so we're going to do it very quickly right now so change it to a screen for all of these and also change the shading to be on main all right, so there we have our particles. I'm going to toggle the switches right here, select all my particles and change a blending mode to additive. We can now duplicate it once more and just keep on doing this random seed until we have whatever we want. We can also jump and select all of these particles, go to the bottom and open up the render settings motion blur and set it to on. And then we can also change the angle to 500 
and we're going to get something or 750 we're going to get some motion blur of the motion of our particles i'm not sure if it's actually updating on all of them because we selected all of them no we actually have to do it individually for each layer so we're going to set this at 750 right here and just go through them again so again do this up front and it's going to take a lot of time um, it's going to fix you just do this up front all right so this looks pretty cool what you can do now is go to the emitter comp and just toggle this on and put it below the particles right here you can change the blending mode to an overlay or whatever you like and then press t on the keyboard that way you actually get like a burn effect on the positions that the particles are emitting from and now you have something like that looks pretty cool now i'm going to right click new and add new camera to my scene and click ok i'm actually using a 50 millimeter current then i'm going to create a new null object i'm going to toggle the switches and make my null object a 3d layer i'm going to connect my camera to that null object so that my null object becomes the control of my camera then i will press p on the keyboard for my null and actually going to the beginning i'm going to click on the stopwatch for the position going to the end of my frame i'm actually or my timeline i'm going to just zoom in a little bit and currently you're not going to see that much because we don't have any 3d layer except for the particles right here and also uh, this layer right here so we actually need to make everything a 3d layer so this uh, everything that's not the particles because the particles are 3d from themselves and also this window will have to make it 3d and just go through everything like the background and actually i'm just going to select all my three layers for the background and go to layer pre-compose them as one background like so and I click ok and i'm going to make this 3d title design 3d and there we go click on the background press p on the keyboard and change the position to like 5000 for the background and then we're going to scale it up like so click on the title design actually the title is in the correct position and then for the window here we're going to push it a little bit back so it becomes closer to the camera I'm also going to scale this down like so and then also uh, moving our camera back a little bit is going to fix that issue and then going to the end of our timeline and then we're going to zoom in our null and now we get a nice animation of our title i'm going to cl right click here create a new adjustment layer i'm going to rename this to camera blur and this is going to be the fade in of our effect as you can see in the preview we have like a depth of field uh, we have it like not in focus and then focusing on the text to do that uh, just go to effect blur and sharpen camera lens blur and change it to a hexagon right here um, or even a heptagon and just increase uh, your radius like so and now you get a really cool view as you can see right here click on the stopwatch for the radius move like two seconds and then just change it back to zero we're going to now uh, go into our keyframe so press u on the keyboard you will see one of these frames right click on it keyframe assistance easy ease go into the graph editor and just drag this in a little bit you actually see it right here that we are showing the speed value instead of the value so make sure it sets its speed graph and then you should see something like this just drag it in like so that's going to make it come to a slow stop so now it's going to fade in and getting a nice focus pull and that's actually it apart from that you can just add a little bit of cool things like a new adjustment layer that's going to be our glow we're going to use the perfect glow that you can actually download on our website for free and um, a link to our website will be in the description it's at the freebies page that you will be able to download the perfect glow and if you apply this to the scene we can lower the threshold a little bit that's going to make it uh, very fairy tale style like so uh, you can also uh, lower the values a little bit like the radius I'm going to set to 10 or maybe even higher actually and change it 30 now you're going to get a nice glow hold control and drag into the uh, intensity right here and see what you can do with that as well maybe increase the threshold and increase the intensity to get some really cool results like so play around with the glow and go to new and new adjustment layer and now we're going to add like a great so hit the return key with layer selected great and there we go and now we're going to add another tint effect and another color correction curves and this is going to be our 
kind of great. So I'm going to set my amount of 10 to 20 so we get uh, a little bit of a nice cinematic tone, uh, maybe a little bit more contrast, but not too much. So bring up this here and we're going to add a little bit more reds and highlights and less in the shadows and for the blues more blues in the shadows and less in the highlights. We get something like this and of course uh, it's going to look a little different so you can press T on the keyboard, press uh, the opacity and change it to like 50 and that's going to soften this out a little bit. Okay, Maybe uh, press T on the keyboard and change it to 65. Right click new adjustment layer and this is going to be our vignette. So we always need to do a little bit of final adjustments, color correction, curves and again a curves and just bring this down like so. Go into your mask path tool options and choose the ellipse tool. Double click on the ellipse tool, subtract that layer right here, press F on the keyboard to feather it out like so and now you have a nice feather that's going to focus yourself towards the center as you can see right here. So this looks actually pretty good. We actually have everything covered that you should have seen for this intro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.